Hunter Hunter, an arguably one of the greatest manga and anime ever created, might have just been given its ending. Yes, one of the most anticipated endings in the history of fiction might have just been given through the medium of tweets. Well, more like through the medium of a letter given to a Japanese daytime television show that got read off and then posted on Twitter and then translated on Twitter so now us English readers can understand what they were saying. So yeah, like basically Twitter. But what on God's green earth am I talking about? Great question. Well, for those of you who live under a rock or maybe you're just happy, you wouldn't know that Hunter Hunter has been in and out of hiatus for about the last five or six years, which is really tough for people who make their entire identity loving Hunter Hunter like, oh, I, I don't know, somebody I know. And while over the last five or six years, Togashi, the mangaka of Hunter Hunter, has occasionally dipped his toe back into writing chapters of Hunter Hunter and given us small segments of the story, it hasn't been anything consistent. In fact, the most consistent it's been in the last six or so years was last December, when Togashi temporarily came back to Shonen Jump through the medium of 10 new chapters for Hunter x Hunter. That got the story all the way from chapter 390 to 400. However, since those last 10 chapters, we haven't gotten anything new. And while we do get the occasional update from Togashi's Twitter talking about how he's restarting or starting chapter 401, we're still waiting on chapter 401. In fact, the biggest thing we're waiting on is Togashi finding an interval that works for him. See, the reason that Togashi has been in and out of hiatus for the last five or six years is because he has crippling back issues. And unfortunately, a big part of drawing is being hunched over. And thus, really, whenever Togashi wants to continue the story of Hunter Hunter, it involves him being in pretty debilitating amounts of pain. And thus, Hunter Hunter has been dubbed Hiatus X Hiatus for a while now. And considering the fact that the first chapter of Hunter Hunter came out in 1998, the story has now been running for 25 years, when in actuality, Hunter x Hunter with 400 chapters should only really have been running for eight years. That's assuming a regular weekly posting schedule. 52 weeks in a year, 52 chapters a year, 400 divided by 52, around eight years. And thus, Hunter x Hunter has been running 17 years longer than originally anticipated. And prior to last December, many Hunter x Hunter fans had given up on the idea of ever seeing this story come to a close. However, recently, it feels as though Togashi has been revitalized in his goal of finishing this story story. Between the creation of his Twitter to keep us updated on all things Hunter x Hunter, the release of 10 new chapters, and today's news. See, Tagashi has decided to make a public announcement to all the Hunter x Hunter fans out there that while he does plan to continue working on Hunter x Hunter, in fact, he has three possible endings of Hunter x Hunter already in mind, he's not sure if he'll be able to finish Hunter x Hunter before he dies. And thus, he wants to release a possible ending of Hunter x Hunter for us to accept as the final ending of Hunter x Hunter should he pass away before he finishes the story. And thus, quite possibly, we've been given the most ending to Hunter x Hunter We'll ever see. And today, we're not only going to talk about the repercussions of Tagashi coming out with an announcement like this, but also talk about this possible ending that Tagashi has provided for us. So, as a man who has a sleeve that is almost entirely dedicated to the anime we're talking about today, it's a big one for me. And if you're even tangentially a fan of Hunter x Hunter, it's a big one for you too. So, get ready to hurt all over as we do a deep dive into what this possible ending could mean for the world of Hunter x Hunter. And maybe more importantly, what this announcement could mean for the world of Hunter x Hunter. But before we get to talking announcements or endings, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page hit that noti bell. And if you want to keep up to date on all things anime and manga news, guys, go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Udaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime and manga this week, this news very much included. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you guys want to look like you keep up with all things anime, go ahead and meander on over into my merch store, TakasAnonymous.net, where we have some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. So, what do you do when your favorite author on Earth starts talking about their impending doom and how the story that you love more than anything on Earth may not ever be completed? Well, you make a video about it, I guess. Because if we can't process these emotions, we might as well monetize them. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, Togashi has released one of the saddest press statements I've ever heard in my entire life. And while some would view this press release as a massive win for the Hunter x Hunter community because now we at least have a possible ending for the story, I can't help but get incredibly pessimistic about what a release like this might possibly signal for the future of Hunter x Hunter. But I'm trying to be optimistic, so... Maybe we can find the rainbow together. See, as we already covered yesterday, Togashi released a press release that detailed what we should take as the ending to Hunter x Hunter if he's to die before he finishes the story. And while many people would see this kind of thing and laugh because Togashi is 57 years old and Japanese men and women live the longest out of anybody on the planet Earth, meaning that Togashi is pretty much all but guaranteed at least 20 more years on this planet, Togashi did start this story 
25 years ago. And mind you, a big bulk of this story was completed when he was still young and healthy. Because here's the thing about debilitating back pain, it doesn't get better with age. Well, obviously, Togashi was already an incredibly accomplished mangaka by the time that he started Hunter x Hunter, as he had literally just finished one of the most popular manga of all time, Yu Yu Hakusho. Him dedicating himself to the completion of that manga at a weekly pace is what destroyed his back. So now at the relatively young age of 32, heading into the now 400 chapter story that is Hunter x Hunter, Togashi was already dealing with back pain. Back pain that would only get worse as Togashi was expected to release chapters of Hunter x Hunter on a weekly basis. Until eventually, Togashi fell out of said weekly basis, going on hiatus after hiatus after hiatus. And while some of these hiatuses were only a couple of weeks long, these hiatuses slowly became months long to years long pretty quickly. And now what could have been accomplished in eight years has been accomplished in 25. Which, if Hunter x Hunter was just some regular run-of-the-mill manga, would probably be fine. At a certain point, both the artist and the people consuming their art are just willing to let the art die. However, both Togashi and his audience know that the Hunter x Hunter manga is probably the greatest manga ever written. And the adaptation of that manga in the form of Hunter x Hunter's second take at its anime is probably the greatest anime ever created. And thus, regardless of the health issues and hiatus his Togashi and his fan base trudge on, both fully willing this IP to drag them to their deaths. And while the prospect of me kicking the bucket before I found out Hunter x Hunter's ending is one of my biggest fears, unfortunately the significantly more plausible scenario here is that the older person in this equation, Togashi, kicks the bucket first. And I'm afraid Togashi is very aware of this fact. And thus while people have been crying out to Togashi to finish Hunter x Hunter's story in another medium outside of manga, like a light novel or simply by having a storyboard painted out to people who want to animate it, Togashi has taken a route that really none of us saw coming. So Togashi in this most recent press release said, I have prepared three possible endings, A, B, and C. And the reason that Togashi has prepared three possible endings is because each and every single one of these three possible endings will be received in a massively different way by the audience. And thus A, B, and C are rated in terms of their perceived public perception, with A being what Togashi believes would be the most popular ending and C being the least popular ending. And Togashi being Togashi not only decided to power rank his possible endings, but also scale them. As Tagashi is not only telling us he has three possible endings, all of which will have massively varying public perceptions, but has also decided to guess on what percentage of people will like these possible endings and what percentage of people will not. And thus Tagashi goes on to say that his A ending would have an 80% approval rate, with 20% of people disapproving of this ending. And that's the best ending, mind you. Now, you could say that Tagashi is a bit of a pessimist. And when you consider the fact that he's a 57 year old man planning for his own death, that actually feels somewhat implied. And therefore this A ending is probably closer to a 90 or even 100% approval rating. But then again, people find a reason to hate on everything, especially endings, so maybe he's accurate here. Now Tagashi goes on to say that this ending isn't a guaranteed hit. He just believes that if he goes with this ending, there won't be an excessive amount of criticism that makes him feel as though the story wasn't ended in a satisfactory way, which is a roundabout way of saying, this is the best possible ending, take it or leave it. Togashi then goes on to say that the B ending would be about a 50-50 split, half of his fan base liking it and half of his fan base hating it. But Togashi, never the one to play it safe, then elucidates us to the C ending, which he believes would have a 10% approval rate and a 90% disapproval rate. And after Takashi tells us about the C ending, which apparently everyone will hate, he asks the question, okay, then why do I keep it around? Well, because apparently ending C is his favorite, which is... So Togashi. I mean, this is a man who built up a main character in Gon for 300 chapters, had them undergo one of the most beautiful character development arcs in the history of anime and manga, and then was like, oh yeah, they're gone now. Oh, but remember that blonde twink you loved from 100 chapters ago? Yeah, they're the main character now. And they're on a boat with everybody else important outside of the two main characters of the last 300 chapters. And did Togashi absolutely nail pulling this off? Yes. Absolutely. Togashi, in maybe the first instance of this ever happening successfully, sidelined the two main characters, the two people that everybody came to Hunter x Hunter for, Gon and Kilawa, and then propped up a cast of side characters to keep the story going at a level that people still believe is equal to when Gon and Kilawa were in charge of the story. One, because Togashi only ever introduced interesting side characters with cool motivations, and two, because the arc that we're currently in, the Black Whale arc, or the Succession Contest arc, is introducing some of the most intriguing and complicated world building Building we've ever seen in Hunter x Hunter. So yeah, while well, Gonakilawa may not be around, the promises of what's on the horizon 
have kind of consoled me in that matter. Also, Kurapika is a fantastic MC. So when Togashi says that only 10% of people would approve of this ending, I have a hard time believing it. See, because here's the thing, the only way that Togashi could write an ending that only 10% of Hunter Hunter fans would approve of would be as if the Black Whale, as it was beaching into the Dark Continent, accidentally ran over Dawn Freaks and destroyed the book he's been writing for the last 300 years. And then a new calamity from the Dark Continent gets onto the Black Whale, kills everybody on there, drives back to the V6 countries, kills everybody there, and then everything becomes a dark continent because it's now taken over by all the calamities. I could imagine 10% of people liking that ending, but that is basically it. Because even if Kropka and everybody in the Phantom Troop and everybody in the Succession Contest and their Nenbis all die in the dark continent, all Togashi would have to do is pan back to the V6 countries and look at Gon and Kilowan and be like, yeah, but they're fine. And 50% of people would be like, you know what? Good enough. So for the life of me, the fact that Togashi has an ending in mind that he likes more than any other ending he's thought of, that he for some reason believes only 10% of his fandom would enjoy means either he is cooking up the most diabolical thing we've ever read or has no concept of just how much we want the ending of hunter hunter to actually happen or the possible third option is something that me and danny recently talked about on our podcast and that is that his favorite ending is just oh no the black whale sunk but go and kilo are still fine because this man who is currently going through debilitating back pains is in the process of setting up one of the longest and most complicated arcs in anime and manga history do you know how much that must suck for him because after the conclusion of go and finding jing he was like oh Shoulder's feeling pretty good. Let's get into this 400 chapter arc. That he's only currently like 65 chapters into. And thus, in actuality, the real ending that would upset 90% of people, but he would be a big fan of, would be the one that wraps up the story before his arm falls off. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I kind of want it to happen. Just watching the Black Whale scoot along in the ocean until eventually it hits an iceberg and then everybody on it dies. And then Togashi just kind of like... Well, I guess we'd ever get to see the Dark Continent, but Gon and Kilo are still fine. Good thing they weren't on that boat. That would definitely piss off about 90% of the fandom, but obviously Togashi would be a fan of that. I think I might have just cracked the code, actually. But here's the thing. Togashi may not even go with any of these three endings. As Togashi openly stated after saying the C ending was his favorite, that he wants to commit himself to finding an ideal ending. And I'm assuming by ideal ending, he means an ending that both he and the fan base would love. And what I take from these first two paragraphs is actually kind of positive. Because here's the thing. Well, obviously, the underlying tone of this entire press release is incredibly sad and depressing. As it's basically Togashi saying, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this story in the next 20 or so years it does show us at the very least he's planning for the end of hunter hunter and the fact that he's still oscillating on what ending he wants to go to means he's still committed to trying to end this story at one time or another now as to whether or not my children will be reading the manga before it ends we simply don't know but the fact that he is thinking about and planning a possible ending for hunter hunter to me at least implies that he's planning on getting there one day. It's just as a 57 year old man with chronic health issues, he doesn't know if death will take him first. But just in case death does take him first, he wants to give us a fourth option, option D. Now option D hit the chopping room floor. That is to say that option D will not be an ending that Togashi uses. However, considering the fact that he also said options A through C may not be options he uses, option D has an equal amount of validity. However, since Togashi knows for a fact that he will not use option D, he wants to give us option D to use as a possible ending for Hunter Hunter in case he dies before he finishes the story with options A through C. So let's get into option D. Ending D opens up with a girl by the name of Jin, fishing in the lake that we opened up to Gon fishing in in chapter one. That is to say that Jin is in the same exact place that we started Hunter Hunter's story, a lake on Whale Island. And Jin is there for a very similar reason that Gon was. See, Jin is there to catch the Lord of the Lake. Just as we pan to Jin with her fishing pole in the lake, her rod snaps violently. This moment that Jin realizes that the Lord of the Lake is on the other side of her rod, so she yanks and pulls the Lord of the Lake out of the lake, just as Gon did before her. However, after throwing the Lord of the Lake over her shoulder, she turns to her mother and essentially says, now that I've caught the Lord of the Lake, you can never tell me to be a hunter again, which is perplexing to us as readers because it's the exact opposite of the scenario that Gon was in. See, instead of catching the Lord of the Lake to become a hunter, Jin has caught the Lord of the Lake so that her mother can never force her to be a hunter. But when we as readers of Hunter Hunter see this kind of thing, it's confusing because Gon wanted to become a hunter, but Aunt Mito didn't want him to become a hunter, which is perplexing because who wouldn't want to be a hunter, right? Well, the answer is 
a fair amount of people. And this is why I believe that this possible ending for Hunter x Hunter is so interesting. But we'll get into why it's interesting in a second. Let's keep going on with the ending here. As Jin walks away with the lake with the Lord of the Lake over her shoulder, the mother turns to her husband and scoffs and goes, Jin's dream is to stay on Whale Island forever and to inherit our place. Why wouldn't she want to be a hunter? And then, almost as though she was talking to herself, she continues and says, it's okay. One day, Jin will change her mind and perhaps she'll want to leave the island and become a hunter. But she then turns to her husband and says, I must know. Why are you and Jin like this? Implying that her husband also doesn't want to leave Whale Island and also never wanted to become a hunter. She then finishes by saying that surely it's because of the blood of Grandma Mito and Grandma Noko. Now the next sentence is actually one of the most important sentences in this entire ending, as the next sentence shows us that the woman seems unaware that Grandma Noko and Grandma Mito are not related by blood, but the father appears to know this information as he smiles knowingly. Now the reason that this somewhat odd sentence was added into this ending is to show us that the the mother is not related to Gon, and that in actuality, the husband in this situation, the father of Jin, is Gon's son, who more likely than not married somebody from Whale Island, which tells us not only does Gon's granddaughter Jin not want to become a hunter and not leave Whale Island, but also Gon's son didn't want to leave Whale Island or become a hunter, which might seem odd. Why would Goad's son and granddaughter not want to become hunters? But it actually makes a fair amount of sense when you think about Hunter Hunter's plot. Oh, it feels important to note, by the way, that Grandma Noko tells us that Gone married Noko, the one other child on Whale Island, the girl with the red hair who was super sad when he was leaving. And upon marrying Noko, they decided to have children, presumably just one who was the father of Jin. Back to the plot thing. See, Hunter Hunter is a story about a boy chasing his dream and about the lives that he touches along the way of pursuing his dream. And in just the first arc alone, we meet people like Karapika and Leorio and Kilawa who want to do things like avenge their clan or get enough money to cure all illnesses or simply make a friend. And in all of these other characters that Gon meets along his journey, we see these more standard dreams. Okrapika hails from an eradicated clan and he's trying to collect all of his fallen brothers and sisters' eyes back. We'll also take the heads of those responsible. Oliorio lost somebody close to him when he was really young to illness that they weren't able to treat because they didn't have money, so now he's obsessed with the concept of gaining as much money as possible to make sure that nobody ever dies of illness again. However, Gon and Kilua have dreams that break the mold for your typical shonen. See, the reason that Kilua's dream breaks the typical mold of what a shonen protagonist would want is because Kilua doesn't actually even really have a dream. Kilua wants to be friends with Gon, and he wants to protect Aluka, but that doesn't show up until much later in the story. But that's basically it. He doesn't want to become the Pirate King or the Wizard King or the Hokage. He just wants to hang out with Gon. And Gon's dream is even less typical than Kilua's, as Gon's only purpose in the manga is is to find his father. And by finding his father, showing his father that he's a capable young man. But when you scope out and you look at Gon's dream within the confines of Hunter Hunter's story, it's about a little boy chasing after a man who put in next to no effort in raising him. It's about a child chasing after a selfish adult to one day gain their validation. Chase after a man who abandoned his family at a young age, only came back when it was convenient to drop a child on them, and then gave that child a series of tasks they had to complete before they could ever see him again. Really, when it comes down to it, to at least a small degree, Jing is the bad guy of Hunter x Hunter, a man who destroyed an entire family dynamic and shaped the ideology of a boy who also had to abandon home at a young age to chase after it, all with the explicit hopes of just meeting him once. The story continues with the mother groaning to Gon's son, but Grandpa Gon was a legendary hunter, and one day, this girl will leave the island. Which is a somewhat interesting line, because while yes, to us, Gon is a legendary hunter, what he accomplishes in Greed Island in the Chimera Antark is relatively classified. So yes, Gon is responsible for taking out one of the royal guards of Meroem, something that he and he alone for a couple of minutes was capable of doing. But Gon is no three-star hunter, he's not one of the 12 zodiacs, he's not even the top of his fields in any kind of hunting. And while Gon and Kilua were the people who cleared Greed Island, Greed Island's sheer existence was only really known to the richest people in the world and a handful of hunters. And the vast majority of the hunters who were involved in Greed Island in any capacity were killed by the bomber, or killed by the Phantom Troop who also popped into Greed Island and ran amok. And directly after the completion of Greed Island, Gon and Kilua are just magically transported to Kite who's in the middle of nowhere and 
working with a couple of college students. And while Gon and Kilua accomplish a whole lot in the Chimera Antarch, the only people who really know that are Palm, Knuckles, Shoot, Nove, Moral, and Netero, who's dead. And thus, either the events of both Greed Island and the Chimera Antarch are flooded out to the world and everybody learns Gon's name, or this is telling us that Gon's career as a hunter did not end after the Chimera Antarch, which is somewhat perplexing because so far as we currently know in the hunter hunter manga gon can't really use nen specifically he can't release his aura and the reason that gon found this out is because gon wanted to go with jing on the black whale however jing said that gon would only be able to come with him if he could use his nen and it's at this point that gon realizes he can't. So at this point, Jin consoles Gon and tells him to go lead a normal life. So Gon becoming a legendary hunter means that he might have got his Nen back. Or he might have found a way to be a legendary hunter without Nen. But really, most importantly, what it implies to me is that Gon's adventures are more likely than not not over. And that's corroborated by the rest of the ending. So the story continues with the entire family coming together around the Lord of the Lake, which has now been cut up into essentially sashimi. And while Jin is preparing the Lord of the Lake, she thinks to herself that mom never understands. Whenever Grandpa Gon talks about his days as a hunter, Grandma Noko gets upset, slamming her knife on the cutting board, talking about how every single time Gon went away to be a legendary hunter, she was left alone, as she would wait months or years for Gon to return from his legendary huntering. And this really affected Jin as she saw firsthand what living a legendary life can do to those around you. As Gon, just like his father before him, left his family behind to find riches, splendor, and fame in the form of being a hunter. And this speaks to the overall themes of Hunter Hunter perfectly, as Hunter Hunter is a story about curiosity and its consequences. Oh, you're curious about what lays on the horizon? Of course, go see it. But be fully aware that when you go to that horizon, you're leaving another horizon behind you. Jing, in his infinite quest of knowledge, ignored some of the most crucial parts of his life, his family. And therefore, ironically, while he was obsessed with the idea of chasing after Don Freaks, who was maybe somewhere on the Dark Continent writing about all of the wonders he was finding, he was forcing his son to be obsessed with the idea of chasing him and unlocking all of the wonders of the world that Jing knew that Gon didn't. And such was the curse of the Freaks. To chase after the man, chasing after the infinite adventure. And thus, this ending isn't about Jin and her father not wanting to become hunters. This ending is about Jin and her father breaking the cycle of the Freak's family. See, it all very obviously starts with Gon's son, who marries the mother who wants Jin to be a hunter. It was Gon's son who saw firsthand what Gon's adventuring was doing to his mother, Noko. And thus, instead of chasing after his father, Gon's son decided to focus on the things around him to exchange curiosity with comfort. But this wasn't done because Gon's son didn't want to be an adventurer. It was done to show the dichotomy between the restless and the affected. Don Freaks was a man solely motivated by the idea of capturing all of the information on the Dark Continent, and thus he was one of the restless. But the children that Don Freaks brought into the world and the family that he lived with were the affected, those who had to live with the reality that they would never see their father, their husband, their grandfather ever again. And Jing was also one of the restless, a man who bought into the ideologies of Don. But Jing didn't want to unlock all the secrets of the Dark Continent. Jing wanted to unlock all the secrets of Dawn, and thus Jing is one step removed in terms of curiosity, as Jing himself, while he wasn't present in Gon's life, set up a couple of things for Gon to undergo so that he could become a better, more well-rounded human. And Gon is one step further removed from Jing, as Gon simply wanted to understand why his father would leave and meet him one day. However, after he accomplished that goal, Gon, so far as we understood, was willing to settle on Whale Island, as the last thing that we see him do in the manga is hang out with Aunt Mito, and therefore it's a possibility that Gon's child would be even one more step removed from him. No longer focused on the curiosities of the horizon, but more focused on the reality of his surroundings. And Jin, a girl with as much promise as Gon had at an equally young age, is now a living example of the fact that there is no correct way to live your life, as the restless will continue in endless pursuit to try and find the thing that gives them meaning without realizing that the thing that gave them meaning this entire time was the affected, and the affected will continue to ponder about what motivates the restless without recognizing that even the restless don't know. The story ends with a chubby child entering the house of Jean as she prepares the Lord of the Lake, and the chubby child is holding a plant. And the chubby child, as they enter the house, exclaims, I caught the Lord of the Lake for real. Let's honor the whole island with it. To which Jin replies, I've always wanted to be with the people that I've wanted to be with, forever and always. To which the child agrees to. And both of them, with broad smiles on their face, prepare the Lord of the Lake. And it's in this moment that we pan away from Jin and her chubby child friend as a bird 
bird flies away from the island, over the town on Whale Island, and over all of its people, making them look as though they're specks. And it's at this point that the narrator kicks in and says the son of one of them, the daughter of another, and the grandchild of another, all live in separate places, exchanging smiles. They might be the children of that character and the grandchildren of that character and the bird flies away into the distance. And in the background, a figure watches the scene. Now, obviously all of this has been very, very poorly translated. So I think what the chubby child actually said as they entered into the house was, you caught the Lord of the Lake for real? Let's honor the whole island with it. Because I don't know why the chubby child would hold a plant and be like, I caught the Lord of the, it's just, it's stupid. And I think Jin responds with something along the lines of, of course, I've always wanted to spend time with all of the people around me and I want to be with them forever. And I believe by the people around her, she's talking about her family and the people of the island, which acts as a sort of confirmation to what the chubby child said as she's agreeing that yes, let's make the Lord of the Lake for everybody on the island because they're the most important people. As the bird flies away, the narrator says something pretty interesting. The son of one of them, the daughter of another, and the grandchild of another all live in different places exchanging smiles. So all in all, Tagashi is hinting at three children here. A son, a daughter, and a grandchild. It's safe to assume that the grandchild he's talking about here is Jin, which means that Togashi is saying that Gon's grand grandchild lives on Whale Island, which leads us with two other characters, a son and a daughter, which means that two out of the three original characters we met, those being Leorio, Karapika, and Kilowa, had children. Those children were either a son or a daughter. Now, there's no way currently of us confirming who had who and who didn't have who, as there's four characters and only three children talked about, but Togashi is saying that this next generation of children born from the original four are living on in different places, all exchanging smiles with the people around them, and therefore us focusing in on this day with Jin is just a show us that the next generation is living happily and that anything that Jin is going through either Karapika's daughter or Leorio's daughter or Kilua's son are all going through equally and this is kind of confirmed with one of the last sentences they might be children of that character and the grandchildren of that character which is kind of just Togashi saying yeah, everybody had babies, with the last sentence of the end and being in the background of figure watches which is undoubtedly Gon returning from some adventure to come hang out with his family and with that Hunter Hunter ends. Wrapping up a beautiful story that focuses on identifying the things around you that matter the most to you, and identifying whether or not the promises of the unknown on the vast horizon outweigh the things you already have. All in all, I'm actually kind of sad that if Hunter Hunter ends, this won't be the ending, but considering the fact that Hunter Hunter has about a 50% shot of actually ending, this may actually be the ending. So how do you guys feel about the ending? Do you feel as though this is an appropriate way to finish off this legendary story? Tell me in the comments below, and why you guys are down there, please for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell listen it takes a couple of generations for the deadbeat dad to truly wash out of your jeans